Hey, fixed income guys, you know, new semester, new videos. Hope you had good uh, two new lectures. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about zero coupon bonds. What we, what we said in class. However, I'm also going to talk about something that we're going maybe to talk in the last lecture, which is basically, you know, the pricing using the continuous method. So let me recall the setup, right? We said that zero coupon bonds is the simplest, is the simplest uh, example of a bond. And how it works is, right, that you give somebody, it's you, here it's you, here it's your uh, investor, right? So the investor gives you money now, okay? And you are going to pay the investor in the future as a one-time payment, right? You're going to give him a one-time payment. So say he's going to give you today 50 cents, you're going to give him $1 in five years, right? But it's going to be a lump sum payment. That's what we call, that's why we call it a zero coupon bond. Now, we said that we have the discount factor D here, right? That the investor is going to give you today and you are going to give him $1 in the future. Now, if you, for example, want to borrow more, you're not going to give him D, uh, you know, $1, but you are going to give him $100 or, or uh, $200, right? You are going to have a principal P in the future. Today is going to give you D times P. So for example, if you want to borrow $200 in the future, let's say in four years, and your discount factor is 0, is 0 0.5, the investor now is going to give you, uh, you know, $100, right? It's very simple. You're going to get 0 0.5, your discount factor, which is here, right? Times your 200, this is 100. So you are going to get, you are going Basically, right, um, uh, you are going to pay him $200, uh, you know, in the future, in five years, he is going to give you $100 today. For example, if the discount factor was not half, uh, you know, 50%, but if the discount factor was, let's say, 80%, okay, you are, uh, you are going to give him $200 in the future, he is going to give you not $100, but he is going to give you 0 0.8 times 200, which is $160, okay? So it's, this is easy peasy. Now, let's talk about, you know, the yield. So we said, by definition, that the D, right, which is your discount factor, equals one divided by one plus Y to the power of N, where N is your maturity, N is your number of years. Okay, and Y is your yield. And we said, right, that yield is actually equivalent to interest rate. So for example, okay, when you go to the bank and you invest $1 now, you're going to get, and let's say your interest is, let's say, 15%, after one year, you're going to get 1.15. What are you going to get after two years, right? So you're going to get 1.15 times 1 plus, uh, plus 0 0.15, so you're going to get 1.15 square, which is 225. Okay, after three years, you are going to get 1.15 to the cube, and after four years, 1.15 to the fourth, and after five years, 1.15 to the, you know, to the five. So, if you are investing, in general, one dollar now, you are going to get one plus y to the n in the future. Okay, so this basically, right, if you compare this to this, you can see that this guy, the yield, right? This guy is the inverse of this guy, right? So basically, you're saying, oh my God, this yield, Y actually acts like an interest rate. So yield, you can think about this as interest rate. Now, these interest rates, right? What are their units? The, the, the units of these interest rates 
okay, are in annual terms, are in annual terms. This is very important to understand, okay, that this 15%, okay, would be in annual terms. What it would be, let's say, if it was half a year, how my, how my discount factor, right, here would look if Y, right, would be a semi-annual interest term, right, and I have five years. So then it would be something like that. One divided by one plus one, one fifteen divided by two, but now it is going to go to the chair power of 10 or, you know, Y power of 10 because five years, how many semi-annual uh, units you have in five years. In five years, you have 10 semi-annual units, right? So it will be power of 10. Now, even more tricky. Say you have a high, one year, right? And you have 15%, okay? What would happen if instead of one year and not a half a year, you would have three months? Three months, guys. What would you think? Oh my God, let's see. So it's going to be one divided by one plus 15%, and now you divide by four. Why? Because in one year you have four periods. So you divide by four, and you multiply by 40. Right? Why do you multiply by 40? Because in five years you have 40 quarters. Is this correct? No, you sorry, you multiply by 20. You see, I got messed up. You multiply by 20. Now, say you have yield every month once. So every month, basically, you have this reinvestment process, yada, 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 yada. So instead of 15 years, you divide by 12, you have 15 divided by 12. Oh my God, how much is that? It's going to be, you divide by three, right? So it's going to be five uh, divided by four, which is 1.25, right? Sorry, but I'm joking. Uh, so 15%, so it's, uh, you know, divide by 12, it's 1.5%, right? That's how you need to think about that, right? Because 15 divided by 12, you divide by 3, you have 5 divided by 4, it's 1.5%. So 15% annual, right, it's actually equivalent in these terms for 1.25% monthly. But however, right, in 5 years, what will be your discount? What will be your price? It's going to be 1 divided by 1 plus 125%, but now you're going to multiply by what? You guess correctly, by 60, right? Because you have five years, you have 12 months, okay? Five times 12 is 60. In general, in general, right? You have the following formula. You have one divided by one plus 15% divide by N, where N is your basically the number of periods per year, but then you need to multiply here by 5 times n, okay? Now, it turns out, it turns out, and I'm going to show it in class, that this actually, that this guy, when n goes, when n becomes more and more and more and more and more uh, uh, larger, right? This guy actually goes to the exponential of 15% times 5, okay? So this is going to be, a continuous version. How do you need to think about this continuous version? You need to think about this continuous version as basically that you're increasing the frequency of your interest rate accumulation, right? So 15% you have per annual, but now when you have a month, you have a day, it's going to be, let's say, in a day you have 15% divided by 365, but how, by how much you need to multiply it here? 5 times 365, right? So this guy is going to be smaller, smaller, and smaller. This guy is going to, look, to, to become larger, larger, and larger. And at the end of the day, it will actually, you know, it will actually uh, uh, cancel each other, right? And it's going to actually go to exponential. Why will it go to the exponential? Because of this classical limit. 1 over n to the, to the power of n goes to e. And I'm going to show you this in class, right? I'm going to give you an Excel demo to show you that this guy actually goes somewhere. And then from here, I will actually show you how to get this. Okay? So 
the main crux of this video, right, is actually first you think about zero coupon bonds. You start with a very simple process where you have an annual yield, you have the number of years n, and then your discount rate, which is a present value of, a, of an instrument which will pay you one dollar after n years, is going to be one over one plus y to the power of n. Right? But now what you're doing, you're actually going to make it a little bit more complicated and you're saying, okay, why do I need to accumulate my yield on an annual basis? Why not on a semi-annual basis? Why not on a monthly basis? Why not on a daily basis? Why not on a per second basis? Why not on a millisecond basis? Okay? And what you, when you are doing this, it will actually, you know, the value will actually, appro will actually approach to the e to the power of minus 15% times 5, right? Because it's, it's, inside, it's, it's down. So it's, this is going to be 1 divided by e to the 15% times 5. Okay? So in this particular case, you're going from here, from this limit to this. Okay? And this is like a conceptual leap. Because this is not easy. It's to think about this, in a way, in a proper way, is not easy. And once again, how I'm thinking about that, right, that if I have a yield, right, let's say for a year, I want to accumulate, I want to make it as frequent as possible on a time basis. And then I'm getting into those kind of limits. Okay? So in class, we're going to, sh to talk about this a little bit more, and I'm going to demo you through Excel why this guy is actually, why this guy is actually goes to this guy. Not prove anything math mathematically, just demonstrate it numerically. Okay? So great talking to you. Have a great weekend, and I hope that uh, I will have a great class. Okay? Thank you very much, and bye.